Okay, so when we've thought about the elements of our survey in terms of the core components, we can start writing our questions. So the first thing that we will generally include in any survey is an information sheet. So that's where we're going to start in this video. So an information sheet just tells the participants something about the survey and uh, what's going to happen during that survey, the sorts of questions they might be asked or the topic area and um, some information about how their data might be dealt with. I'm not going to go into details around things like GDPR requirements um, or ethics, but you will have some requirements in any survey where you are collecting data to consider what your institution's issues, um, uh, what your uh, institution's policy is on data um, and dealing with data. Now, obviously in terms of GDPR, um, there are there is a distinction between data that is identifiable and data that is non-identifiable. So it's worth considering what data are you collecting and are individuals identified from that. And this sort of detail would go into an information sheet. I'm not going to talk about the details of content, but just to give you an idea that that's the sort of thing that you might include in an information sheet. So normally in a survey, we set up an information sheet just as a main um, pure text question. So I'm going to click here on my information sheet block. I'm going to click on my question and I'm going to change that to a descriptive text. So to edit, so you can see here there is no response option in descriptive text. So to edit this, um, I'm going to click on the question text and start typing. Now you may already have an information sheet that you want to copy from a Word or Word uh, uh, equivalent document. You can just copy and paste that into the section here, or you can begin typing it in here. So um, what I might uh, include at the top is the title of the study, um, research uh, question or whatever that might be, the, uh, the overview of the study, um, and then some details. This um, survey is asks questions about etc etc. Um, some information sheets can be set up as questions, so what, uh, uh, sorry, why have I been chosen, and you might include details around there, what will I be asked, how will I be stored, these sorts of questions can be um, included and you might include details in terms of answers to these questions. So again, I'm not going to include all of the answers here, but you'll see how easy it is just to uh, begin adding detail into your survey. The other thing that you might want to do is um, format this. So what we can do if we look up here, there's a, a little tab that says Rich Content Editor. When we click on that, um, it just opens up as a, a, a little processor that we can um, use to edit this. Um, and if you click on the more, you'll see that there's different formatting options. So we could, for example, make the title bold, um, and we could change the, the color of the font for this, um, and we could increase the size of the font, um, and we could change these again to colored questions with a, um, A, a standard colored answer. So you can see how it's quite easy just to format the questions in this rich content editor. The other thing that you might include in here um, is something around the researcher details and um, you might include uh, details for more information or sources of support. So what I might include under here is my name and perhaps my email address. So I could just include my email address here could might include a phone number or a postal address as well. Um, but what I want to show you at this point is 
What we can also do in here is make this a clickable link. So if I highlight my name when I'm in the rich content editor, I can move to this little link or I can click, you can see there that the shortcut keyboard is Control and K, which is a standard one for adding any kind of link um, across any program. So I'll click on that link and it'll open up a box and what it'll say is this is what the text is going to be displayed and this is the link type. Now this happens to be an email address rather than a URL, which is a website. So I'm actually just going to click on email and then I'm going to type in my email address here. And the other thing that you can do, what this will do is it will tell the computer or tell the, uh, if they're doing it on their mobile or on a, a tablet, um, that this particular link um, should open up an email client. So if they clicked on that on their mobile, that would open up their, their default email client, whether that's Outlook or Gmail or any of those sorts of things. And if they've got one set up on their computer, that will open it. So what you can also do is pre-populate some of those things. So um, I might include a title about the survey. Um, and you could in theory include something standard in that body text. This means if someone clicks through this and asks about a question about it, you know exactly where that email has come from. So I'll just leave it as that at the moment. Um, and you'll see now that is a hyperlink. Um, so I could also put more information. So for example, if I wanted a link through um, to uh, university ethics um, or an ethics process or those sorts of things or something more about the study or the research group I could put in a, a link here um, so let's just assume this was was a link around ethics or GDPR um, I could put in the link there again I could con click on control K or highlight the, the link and I could type in the um, the address in there and that will be a clickable link if I wanted to include some sources of support um, again I could include some details around it um, if you would like further uh, details of so here I could include a link, which could be to a particular, this isn't an address by the way, but you'll just to see the idea. So any address, it doesn't have to be an institutional address, or any, any web address that might be a source of support um, that you might want to include in there can be included. So you might have a list of sources of support or further information um, that you include at the end of your information sheet. So what we could now do is just preview that and we can see how that would look on a, um, a, a standard web browser um, and we can see what it would look like on a mobile. And so if we clicked on this, that should open up a, an email provider. So it's asking me which one. So again, this isn't necessarily um, been set up on this machine um, and we can click through now this web address doesn't necessarily work because it might be a real web address but you will see that that would take you through to a standard um, web address so that's how you set up an information sheet um, and we can leave that as the first page. Now the second thing we might want to do, so what we can do again is a benefit of looking in blocks. If I hide that block, is I then I go to a consent form. Now on a consent form, I'm gonna create a new question. Um, so with a consent form, you normally have, um, either some people have multiple questions that people need to consent to, or um, include some information about who can take part and what they're consenting to and ask them to either consent or not consent. That's generally the easiest way to deal with this because if you have multiple questions, for the most part, you'll have to consent to all of them anyway. So, so I'm just gonna show one way, which is to include a consent form, which just has some bullet point list. So um, I'm just gonna, again, your ethics uh, process um, or your, uh, will inform what you want to include in here. So this is going to be a basic format. Um, by, cons um, by consenting to take part, you agree to the following. So I am over, say, 18. I have read the information sheet. I have had the 
questions so you can ask questions or email questions. I understand that I will be anonymous in um, that my data will be anonymous. Um, and you can include other items within that. Um, are you happy to take part? So again, I might just go into my rich content editor and create a bulleted list of these, these questions or, or um, things that I am consenting to. So you can see here, are you happy to take part? So really we want to have um, what we notice here is that Qualtrics, that it can do this at various points, tries to preempt the answer that you would want from a question. So because I've put, are you happy to take part? It has worked out that happiness may be the sorts of thing that I'm interested in here. Now, actually, it's not. Um, or, I mean, I could change that. Maybe the word happy is not. Uh, um, so it could be, do you consent to take part? Um and I can now change this. So this has been an automatic choice. So this is just points out what you'll notice here is on multiple choice questions, there's a little box that we can have automatic choices and you can change any of these. Um, so there's lots of different variations of the, what are known as the, the anchors or the response choices um, that you could complete. So in this case, I'm really only interested in yes or no. Now you'll notice here um, that uh, we've got five choices. Well, we don't need five. I just want to change that down to yes and no. So there is, do I consent to take part? Yes or no. Now we want to make sure it's a single answer rather than a multiple answer where they could tick both. And the other thing we want to do on a consent form is we want to make sure two things. One is that people have consented. So everybody who takes part in the survey has consented to take part. So this brings up the issue of a validation. So we can have, we have two validations. We can force people to take part, uh, to answer it. So in the chart, in the, in the, um, in this format, they cannot continue unless they have given a response or we can give a request response, which means if they haven't given a response, it comes up with a message saying they haven't responded, are they happy to continue? Now with consent, we do need to make sure that everybody has consented. So this will always be a forced response. So this means that they cannot answer, they cannot continue without answering that question, but this at the moment just means they have to answer it. At the moment, we also want to make sure that if they say no, they can't complete the survey. So anybody who has said no, they don't consent, does not therefore give you the data um, or, or begin completing that survey. So the second thing we want to do is um, include a, an option, which means if they click on no, it just takes them to the end of the survey. The way we do that is we have this little options here. Um, so you'll notice a little settings uh, cog. So if we click on that, there's a number of different options that we can have. We can display it under certain conditions. We can take forward choices. We can skip it for certain things. And there's all sorts of other things that we might want to do. At the moment, what we want to do is add a skip logic, which means, um, so display logic is display this question if certain features have been shown. This one is to, dependent on the answer of this question, take them to a different place of the survey. So if I click on add skip logic, you'll notice we've come up here, which default is, if the condition yes is selected, what should they do? Well, we want to change that to no. So if no is selected, then skip to the end of the survey. Could be end of block are the two options that we have, but end of survey is what we've got. So that is totally fine. So now we'll notice we have this little, um, looks like a, a little snowflake, which means there's a validation option, which is this one here. So there's a validation option. And we have this skip logic, which means if they have selected no, they go to the end of the survey. So again, we could just preview this. Um, and just test that out. So here's our information sheet. And then we go forward to the next question, which is our consent form. And if I try to continue, you'll notice here, it says, please answer this question. I cannot continue without consenting. And if I click on no, and then move forward, it will take me straight to the end of the survey. If I restart that, and then go through that and click yes, then that should take me to the next question, which I haven't written as of yet. So that's how we set up uh, information and consent forms. So this is come up by default as question eight. So I'm just going to change that to consent. So I know that in my data, when I download it, the consent question is the one um, 
the, the one that's called consent. So that's setting up information sheet and consent forms in Qualtrics.